All right, now let's finally talk about the Scream 7 stuff because things are about to get a little heavy-handed here. And uh, just before we start, please don't be triggered. Don't be mad. Don't send hate to anybody. Uh, I fully support Melissa Barrera, and I hope she has a long and thriving career. I am so sad the day she got fired from Scream 7 because I really wanted to see her continue. Well, at the same time, I support Nev in wanting to be in Scream 7, and I hope that movie turns out good for Kevin William and Scream, uh, and Nev Campbell's sake. I still really disappointed with Spyglass's decision. Well, anyways, uh, Melissa Barrera had this article with The Hollywood Reporter titled Melissa Barrera on Getting Fired from Scream and the Controversy that Followed. This is honestly, I think, a really good step in Melissa Barrera's career. I know some people are annoyed and go like, oh, dude, why are they keep talking about this controversy? This was a PR move, and I think it's the start of Melissa Barrera's redemption campaign because people don't – you got to remember, when she was fired from Scream, it was, it was looking like she was getting blacklisted because of her opinion – on that political issue that I'm not going to get into because I'm not smart enough or well-versed in that kind of thing. But um, but so many other people who voiced their opinions, they were getting fired left and right from projects. We had other actors, writers, and producers that were like being let go of stuff because they were voicing their thoughts. And so it seemed like Melissa was unfortunately is about to have a dead career because she was open and honest about her opinion. This article, I think, is the start of her being okay, not being blacklisted, and I'm very happy for that. There's a couple of things... That make me feel that way. Thanks so much, uh, Westside, for the gifted there. I really appreciate that, man. So here it says, when asked if she, uh, if she and Campbell had spoken about her return, Barrera pauses before declining to answer. But she effuses uh, uh, ab about her friendship with other former Scream uh, cohorts, criticizing, uh, citing Jasmine Savoy Brown, Lena Liberto, and Jack Quaid as those uh, whom she had recently connected. We'll, play, we'll plan little reunions to play board games because that's what we used to do when we were shooting, she says. And it was always fun seeing those kind of photos and set behind the set videos of when they were just, um, you know, having fun with each other on set, talking and whatnot. But that kind of caught me by surprise in this article is when she was straight up asked, like, how do you feel about Nev Campbell being part of Scream 7? And she paused didn't answer, and then moved on to talking about the people who do support her, which is basically the core four of that Scream 6. And I'm like, oh, dude, to me, that sounds like they're maybe not on good terms. Now, at the same time, it's a no-win scenario, no matter what she says. I think it would have been a really bad look of Melissa if she started bashing Nev for wanting to be back in her franchise, doing that, saying, oh, she should have supported me. She should have boycotted along with that. I just, I, that doesn't uh, look right, right? But then also, even if they are on good terms, and let's say they did talk it out and she's fine with Nev Campbell being in there, I don't think Melissa can say that because in a weird way, that is her like supporting the movie or giving her okay, and you know Spyglass would love that statement. Spyglass would eat up that statement, go, oh, Melissa Barrera says she's okay with Scream 7. Everything's good. There's no beef. No. After all the hurt, turmoil, and things that Melissa Barrera went through, she shouldn't be giving her blessing to Scream 7 or saying things like, oh, we're good, we're fine. In fact, I'm happy she's part of that movie. Spyglass will, will twist her words and be like, okay, see, guys, there's no controversy. The person you're mad about, she even said it herself that she's good, so you can leave us alone, right? So I think Melissa just might never address the Neff situation and, and, and just be like, and for all we know, they could be good or they could not be. From this, it sounded bad because also uh, there was another part, where was it? There was a part in the article where they asked if uh, Nev Campbell wanted to comment on the situation, and she declined. Nev, uh, uh, Nev Campbell did not want to respond, so it's like, oh, geez. It, it really, I really don't want to believe these, uh, and I don't want to start rumors that they're feuding, but like, it just, it doesn't look good, unfortunately. But yeah, any kind statement Melissa Barrera even could have made, it wouldn't have been a good look. That's why she definitely paused when she was asked, because in her mind, maybe they are good. And she couldn't have just said, oh, we're great, because Spyglass would have eaten that up. They would have thought that. So uh, from then on, and, you know, other parts of the article then even talked about Radio Silence, the directors that were supposed to do Scream 7. And we're finding out in this article, 
I basically got exited out by Spyglass. So here it says, Radio Silence had intended to revive Scream franchise with a trilogy focused on Barrera and Ortega's character and believed Abigail could work before a seventh installment. But according to the pair, Spyglass hoped to get the ball rolling sooner than their schedules allowed. We got exited. And, dude, that's what makes it even more fishy to me. Because I don't think what Melissa Barrera said was worthy of a firing and everything I hear makes it sound like Spyglass just looked for any little reason they could so they could get rid of her. If they were willing to let go of the directors because they're like, oh, you're not quick enough. We need to make this seventh movie. And Melissa Barrera is also somebody in Abigail, one of the main stars. I think she's the main character. Doesn't that also tell you they didn't want to wait for her to be done with that vampire movie so they can do Scream 7? Like, come on. They just look for a BS reason to get rid of her. And, uh, and the hero says, we'll be sad that there's not, uh, not going to be an end to Sam Carpenter's story. But in our minds, we designed Scream 6 so that the story feels complete. And that was smart of them, you know? One of the things I'm always begging for with the Scream movie is to kind of end on a cliffhanger, end on a continuation, let a killer get away. That way we have more of a soap opera continuous story. That was Kevin Williamson's original plan for the end of Scream 4. Jill was supposed to survive. Um, Nev, uh, Sidney Prescott was going to have amnesia. They were going to go to college. Well, uh, the cousin was going to go to college and Nev was just going to fall along to protect her. And then another ghost face would show up with like, I know what you did, and I'm coming after you. Oh, it sounded so cool. I wish we would have got that scream. But uh, in situations like this, it was smart that they closed off the chapter and ended it there. Because imagine if they left Scream 6 on a cliffhanger or something else like that. I'd be so disappointed because it's up in the air. If we'll ever see Sam and uh, what was the Carpenter sisters again. And that sucks. So... There was that. Then they also talked about the Christopher Landon situation, the previous director who was excited. Melissa Barrero was like, that sucks. I, he seemed really happy to do it, so I feel bad for him. And Radio Silence said that they talked to him. And yeah, you could tell Christopher Landon was so excited for that. So that sucks on that. The other things I was seeing about Melissa Barrera returning, she says here, while she doesn't rule out the potential return to scream, Barrera is realistic about the odds. I've learned to say... I've learned to... I've learned to never say never, but also a lot of things would have to happen for Sam to come back, she says. For now, next page, next chapter, and then we'll see what the future holds. I think, obviously, the main thing that needs to happen for Sam to come back is either Spyglass sells the Scream franchise, which I'm sorry, guys. It's just not looking like that's a real thing they're going to do anytime soon. They're making money. They're profitable films. Until they have, like, maybe three flops in a row... They're not going to look to get rid of that franchise. And even if they flop, they'll just put it away in their treasure chest and be like, ah, we're going to dust you off in 10 years and try again. When you have a valuable IP, you just don't sell it. You know, like that's just the way it goes. So I doubt that's going to happen, even though I would love that. Uh, the other thing would have to be Spyglass issues an apology, says they're sorry, takes back everything they said and big studio companies with their egos and executives and all that, they would never apologize even though they should. So it's really looking like the Sam story might not come back for a while. But it's, it's always nice to hear. Never say never. We've gone through weirder before. I think even Jamie Lee Curtis as Laurie Strode has said never, uh, has said never again. And then she showed up in the Blumhouse trilogy. So Scream 8, 9 or Scream 12. Carpenter Sisters will be back someday. So yeah, I I'm just happy this is looking like the whole point of this article was not to re-stir up drama, was not to talk about why she was unjust. The whole reason for this article is to put Melissa back in a positive spotlight, let the world know she is not canceled, she is not going to lose her career, she's got three movies coming up this year, she's going to do just dandy, and I wish nothing but the best for her. And even to prove it to you, the article ends with saying several agents and managers at THR spoke to believe that Barrera hurt some of her projects by speaking out in support of Palestine. But they say it was not a permanent strike against her. Uh, given the public sentiment has shifted somewhat as details about the humanitarian crisis emerge. Before it was, how dare you? But now her comments are being seen more positively. So one says one top deal maker. So, yeah. She's not canceled. She's going to have a good career. I'm happy about that. What do you guys think about all this?